standing up to my dad ended up being one of the most important parts of my feminist journey. And I've been, you know, I've been studying this stuff for so long. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out how to be strong, independent women, how to be a feminist, how to fight for social justice, and, and not like a white feminist either. I mean, in all areas, right? Like care about everybody, not just, you know, me. And honestly, I mean, the education part is critical. It is. Reading books, understanding patriarchy, understanding power structure, understanding, you know, systemic oppression, right? Patriarchy, white supremacy culture, capitalism, uh, ableism, and all these things intersect, right? But standing up to my father was the game changer. That is when I actually started to value myself. And what I mean, there's a lot of examples I could give you, but I actually want to talk about one in particular. In my experience, when I addressed something with dad, I started to have a ripple effect in my entire life, especially with other men. It doesn't have to be dad uh, for some people. A lot of times people end up, you know, it's a, an, an, any gender, right? It could be a mom who who then when you, you take that into your romantic relationship. But I just want to stick with my own story and apply it to yours if it helps or like whatever, forget about it forever if, if it doesn't. But I started to realize that every time I centered my father's feelings and his shame and his priorities and his whatever over my own well-being, I hated myself. I felt disempowered. I felt more self-destructive. I felt like phony you know because if anybody knows my story I'm like raw raw you know I lived in my truck for five years climbing guide raft guide solo traveler for a long time I used to get introduced in shows in New York as like we can't believe this girl's still alive right like risk taker fearless I'm fearless blah but until I stood up to my own father none of that meant anything and so I, this isn't just for women it's literally for anyone who follows me because I think there's a lot of men out there who won't stand up to their dads or their moms because we know there's a lot of toxic boy moms out there who are meddling in their son's romantic relationships and those sons won't stand up to mom and it ruins their marriages so again apply this if it helps in whatever area but the the best example I can think of is when I stopped letting my dad pick me up from the airport this man has been in so many, <laughs> so many car accidents, especially like the last like 10 years of his life. And with two different cars, he claimed that they surged, which is basically he's saying like they're haunted. <laughs> like he's saying there's a, a ma ma malfunction. He was at a recycling dumpster place and he also like sh would shake a lot right so i mean he would drop like the pie at thanksgiving like he would spill stuff all over him all the time because he was on so much medication because he was a diagnosed narcissist like back in the day before anybody had that diag not anybody but that was not a thing right people didn't diagnose like everyone on the internet or their all their people in their life is like a nar you know what i mean literally diagnosis so instead of ever really doing the deep work deep work you know he just took meds and drank every day until he died and used other outlets and other escapism uh, because he came from so much trauma so much trauma and I find out more and more every year I'm like no no wonder no wonder so at this dumpster he this this is what the, he thinks it surged this is what I believe happened instead of um, pushing the brake he floored the gas and he literally ran uh, into like a, a recycling dumpster, right? And almost ran over a bunch of people. He also has hit a motorcyclist at some point. I'm shocked that person did not die. He's just been in so many accidents. And when he drives, he's also narcoleptic, like me. Unlike him, I actually take medicine for it when I drive because I don't want someone dying, <laughs> myself included. Uh, but he would drive like this when he was driving to stay awake <laughs> I mean it, it, it worked I guess but he also just he would shake a lot and he would put you know push he was always like you were like this when you rode with him because he would he was such a nervous driver and a nervous person in general that he would slam on the brakes and then gas break gas break gas break right and every time I mean I, I left home when I was 18 and I have not been back since except for visits I'm 46 now so that's a lot of like times of someone picking me up at the airport and I remember it was my sister of course my older sister who was like 
you know, we both hated driving with him. Because even as kids, we'd been in accidents with him. I have always been in afra afraid to be in a car with this man driving. And by the way, remind me to do a, a driving trauma that men give. I don't know a single woman who doesn't have um, like car trauma from men. Too much to say about that to put it in this video. But I just remember being like, okay, you know, because I went to, um, you know, I lived in LA and New York and all these places and and he would always be like, okay, I'll pick you up at the airport. Now this is like a, a father who's trying to be a good dad and show up and pick, you know, like it meant a lot to him to pick me up from the airport. And I think a lot of that is because he wasn't really very present as in our lives as children. And once we became adults who could actually talk to him, he actually liked hanging out with us, you know? Whereas when I was a child, I was like, does he hate me? <laughs> like why? I might as well not be here. It's literally football all weekend and he only sees us a few days a year month and he can't be bothered but as adults he loves well he still ignore me all the time as an adult but at least we could have conversations meaningful ones kind of so i knew it meant a lot to him to pick me up from the airport right yet i was sure if i died at a young age it was not from rock climbing and rafting and literally doing jobs that are so dangerous <laughs> or doing hobbies that are so dangerous, or traveling alone as a woman all over to multiple countries and sleeping on strangers' couches on couchsurfing.com. Nope, it would be my dad driving me home from the airport. I was sure of it. And so finally, I don't remember how exactly, if there was like a definitive date, but I just remember at a certain point being like, you know what, I don't wanna have this hard conversation telling him he's a bad driver because clearly even multiple accidents and you know, ghosts, haunted cars that he owns and literally sends back to like Toyota trying to get a recall done. None of that will convince this man that he's a terrible driver. I'm sure I, he's not gonna listen to me either, especially cause he's a boomer and I'm his daughter. And so I just started to arrange it so that he, he somebody else would get me, right? And my sister and I would like arrange it, you know, so like if she was in town, she would say something like, oh, I've got a hair appointment over there anyway, I'll get her. You know, it was a lot of like mental or, you know, just gymnastics to try to like not hurt this man's feelings. And it's partly for his sake, but also for ours. Cause you do learn at a certain point that it's just easier to go along with a lie and to deal with the <laughs> emotional labor of a narcissist hurt feelings, right? And so I, I, I don't, like the last several years of his life, he never drove me. And I remember that little boost of confidence I got every time I centered my mental health, my emotional health, and my literal safety and my life over the feelings of my dad, who as much, you know, <laughs> anger and as much issues I had with him because of all the things that he'd done to me and my sister. I still love the man. I still love the man. I still, I still do now. And you know, it, it's just, it's really hard for kids to stand up to their parents, even adult children. And also because I have chronic codependency and especially, you know, with addicts, alcoholics or any kind of addicts or narcissists, it's almost on a cellular level. It feels wrong to not center that person. But this is cycle breaking, right? This is, I, 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 I didn't want to keep feeling like I'm living a lie. And that airport thing, I started building on stuff like that. You know, I started talking back to him. If he said something inappropriate, I would be like, you can't say that stuff. Instead of being like, nah, or like, ha, like laughing. I would just talk to him like an adult, like an equal adult, not a monster and not a baby because he was absolutely a king baby. But eyeball to eyeball, equal human value. I respect you, but I will not let you disrespect me. That's how I respect you. That stuff was so important for my feminism journey, for my belief in being a good human, because especially being a white woman from the South and having studied that, I mean, I was a history major in college and that was a big focus of mine. Understanding as a white woman from the South, the more I let white man, king baby, hurt me, oppress me, silence me, abuse me, disregard me, or whatever it is, maybe I'll just take that in and hate myself. But historically speaking, everyone 
that I have power over as a white woman, particularly black indigenous and other people of color, especially black people, pays a price when I don't heal.